<laughs> Today, the camp introduces you to one of the Sunshine State's greatest animal gems, wild flora. Oh, they feel so cool. We'll meet a few of their wildest residents. This place is off the charts and top notch. Our animal mission is simple. Education in action, conservation in action. This is Camp Kennedy. All right, don't believe everything you read because we're actually going to go on inside here of the albino alligator exhibit here in Wilds, Florida. And we're going to get up close and personal with them. And this is all part of your guys' kind of, it's a, something you give for the guests, yeah. certain guests, that they're able to interact with some animals. And today, we're going to interact with four different species of animals. We're starting things off with some of my favorite crocodilians, but these guys are special. They're albino, as you can see. Uh, how long have these animals been here, man? Uh, so they've had them for two years here at Wild oh, Florida. Wow. Yep, these guys came all the way from St. Augustine Alligator Farm. Nice. The big ones. Yep, yep, the big ones Blizzard, a little over there Snowflake. Uh, so that's the male, the big boy, and then the small one's the female. Uh, he's 14 and she's 27. Uh, so <laughs> she's definitely a little bit older. Yeah, that's and, crazy. Uh, yeah, he's definitely growing. He's an eating machine, so he's uh, getting even bigger since he first arrived. All right, so you know, guys, you know I love uh, when teaching people about wildlife. Uh, it is always better when you get people kind of up close with them, you know. I, I think that's very valuable. Now, obviously, these are well-behaved uh, animals. Um, so we're going to, we got some protocols that you want me to follow. And yeah. What are they? So the first thing is we don't want you guys to go swimming or touching <laughs> these guys. We well, offer a lot of encounters here that encourage touching and stuff. Okay, you uh, know my channel. I, yeah, so exactly. We sometimes do swimming, with, but <laughs> yeah. we're not going to do that yeah. today. So these guys, uh, we do a lot of training, a lot of interaction with them, just not hands-on for the fact that they're uh, more of a dangerous, if you will, than a sloth or than, you know, than a lemur in a sense of what they are. Okay. Uh, also, being that they are albino, their sense of sight isn't as good, but that means their sense of smell is heightened. So we don't want to dangle our arms over the water when okay. we're here during the encounter because they're really, really receptive to smell and uh, anything like that. Uh -huh. But during the encounter, we bring uh, the guests in here and we work on the training, the opera conditioning, and we use croc chow. So Very Missouri, good. Missouri croc it. chow, yep, this is pretty much their primary diet. I'll give you a piece here. Thank um, you. So we just give them the uh, audible cue because again, their sight's not as on. And we'll pop the lip, and if they come over, then reward them to the side. And usually he'll just kind of rake over. And they go. find it eventually. <laughs> yeah, she's kind of more uh, her speed, so she'll see, she kind of slowly comes over. And you can kind of give her that little right, man, pop. And, and go for it, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oop, I hit her poor little face there. <laughs> I'm, I'm so bad at this. If you remember from the episode of Alligator, there we go, she got it. Do you guys remember the episode at Alligator Adventure? I could not get the biscuit in the gator's mouth. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a bad. small target. So we're yeah. going to go all the way over here because we oh, like to good. tell everybody when we do the encounter, it's really obviously awesome. Like you say, you get kind and of I'm really here. glad they got this barrier here because <laughs> yeah. it's very good. Very I'm not good. as well on my feet. So we want to get people, you know, seeing them, but also get them moving because they're, gotcha. they're lazy reptiles being said nicely. So we want to get them moving, get them active. So we'll call them over again. And they're very receptive to the uh, audible call. And as soon as he makes his way pretty much all the way over here, we're going to reward him with the croc chow. And so this oh, is something yeah. we we show the guests and we let them actually participate in the okay. training. So you know, I gotta give I get what's his name again? So this is Blizzard. The Blizzard, big boy. come here, buddy. I know you you. Let's get it right there. There, there you go, go. Blizzard. I, all right. I felt bad for him, man. Like yeah, we got to get Blizzard some spectacles uh, <laughs> to help him out with the croc chow, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, that that's really cool, and this is awesome. But there's three more animals we got to get to, so let's get to it. Let's man. get to them. All right. Very cool, right man. Here, right? We're uh, hanging out here with Kayla. Uh, say hello to everybody, Kayla. Hi, guys. There you go. All right. Yeah, <laughs> man. And what's this little one's name? So this is Chloe. She's about a year and a half years old, so they typically will, can live to be about 30. So she's our youngest here. We have wow. four total in our park, so two are in this enclosure. And is this a two or three toad? This looks like a... There's three toes on the back, but two on the front. So how do you tell what sloths? Is it the front? 
do you go by? Correct. So okay. if, if it if they have three toes on the front and three toes on the back, it's gonna be a three toed sloth. Um, if they have two on the front, three on the back, it's gonna be a two toed species. Um, so that's okay, kind of how you would cool. tell them apart. Um, and so you know, what was really cool is a few years back, Tom and I were in Costa Rica and we're standing in these bungalows. And actually, we would, may I, am I able to touch it like yeah. with this interaction? That's what's so cool about this. You're able to really get up close to these beautiful animals. Oh wow. Look at that. So we, we actually um, had a sloth right in a tree uh, just outside our little bungalow we were standing at. So I climbed the tree. I was actually able to get up close with a wild sloth. But you don't want to really touch a wild sloth because they're actually, they can actually defend themselves quite capably, albeit slowly. But if they dug those claws on you and just, they'll just scrape you. But this is awesome. My gosh. And you know, they're fur is different than a wild in the wild because this is actually clean, right? Usually Correct. they're quite dirty. So usually because where they're from, which is Central and South America, it's constantly rainy and they sleep about 18 to 20 hours a day and they stay in one position. So with all that, they usually grow algae and moss on their fur. So because we do have rain here, but it's not consistent okay. um, like it would be in our natural environment, um, they kind of don't have that algae and moss growing up. Oh there. man, this, this is really cool. Uh, and it's just a beautiful animal. Uh, you know, the other thing you mentioned, they sleep for how long? 18 to 20 hours a day. Yeah, so, and the reason they do that, guys, is because in the wild they're eating leaves and there's not a lot of nutrients in the leaves. So, almost, they're mammals, make no mistake, but they've kind of taken on a little bit of a reptilian uh, metabolism. So, they have an incredibly slow metabolism so they can really make use of what little nutrients they get in their diet in the wild. Now, here we're feeding them some grapes. Now, this is a treat, right? Correct. It's okay. like their chocolate, essentially. Uh, gotcha. So, usually, what are you feeding these guys? So these guys will get a variety of vegetables of different sorts and then they'll also get a thing called a leaf eater biscuit. It looks like a big chunk of dog food and then sometimes we'll give them um, greens to go along with that as well and then wow. some of their favorite brows is crepe myrtle and hibiscus flowers and they'll eat all of that. Oh that's right so up. cool. So this is awesome guys. Yet another animal that you can experience here <laughs> at Wild Florida up close and personal. It's just beautiful. Very cool. I like his little cow look. He's got really cool <laughs> hairstyle on the back there. Kind of comes to a point jealous because I don't have much hair left. Hey, baby. May I try and feed it? Is that okay? Yeah. Oh, oh that's all right. You dropped it right in my hand. No worries. Just all right, pop it here. right in her mouth. Just pop it right in her mouth. Come here, baby. Mm -hmm. You want she, that? She wants it. <laughs> no? Oh, here you go. go. You popped it right in. All right, man, we're gonna move on. And I think this next one is gonna be a little bit sharper than this. And I mean that literally. Okay, folks, what do you think we're gonna be doing here, Kayla? We're you, gonna... you want interactions with this? Yeah, you definitely can. <laughs> so you can definitely come play with them if All you want. All right, <laughs> let's go play with the porcupines. Now, which where, which species are these? These are African crested porcupines. Well, there you go, a little African crested. All right, with the Lion King coming out this summer, I'm sure we'll see a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you watch Disney films? I do. Okay, there you go. <laughs> All right, let's see. What are their names? Stella and Safari. Stella and Safari and some leopard tortoises too. Yep. Awesome. Hey. That's cool. Yeah. A multi-species exhibit here. Why don't you come on Ken, in? and you could have these guys with your leopards. I could, that, that would be pretty neat, man. I got a whole leopard tortoise colony. We just need some porcupines. Oh my God, who's this, Stella? So this one is Safari. Oh, okay. um, so how you can tell them apart is she's a little bit poofy in the quills. Doesn't really like to be touched, but she um, definitely loves the treats. All right, well, I'm um, letting her sniff me. I'm not putting anything <laughs> out there. But Stella on the other hand, which is going to be this one, she's a little bit um, more relaxed in the quills. Um, and she's a little bit darker in the fur and the quills. And that's kind of how we tell her apart. She also loves her armpit scratches. She loves to be um, petted. And she loves her treats as well. Okay, now listen. He's turning his back to me. At what point do I need to be worried if this guy's gonna, you know? That, now the common misconception is they shoot their quills into you. They do not do that. The quills are actually. <laughs> Hold on a second. I didn't know if I liked that. I play with crocodiles, but I don't want to get poked by a porcupine. That's just a thing porcupine. she does. Am I, mean, I saying how that bad right? would porcupine? it be? Like, what would she do? Back into you? I don't understand. Like, well, so happens? if she did feel threatened, she would kind of do that behavior you just saw. Um, but that's just she's trying to get a reaction out of people. So. She got one. <laughs> so we just tell guests usually when they come in just to not react to that. But 
normally if they felt threatened they would actually poof with those quills use that base of the quills that you kind of see that are all together as a rattle almost like a rattlesnake <laughs> and if that decides not to work um so it's kind of trying to teeth, te stomp their feet and yeah. kind of run backwards into their predator um with the misconception that they shoot their quills they actually fall out so it's almost like modified hair so every day when we come in to clean we find loose quills in her, their exhibit i was gonna um, ask so is it's it almost like when we brush our hair loose hair you strands lose some, hair. some people lose more hair than others sadly <laughs> um it's a so shame yes it's the same thing <laughs> is it really the same thing i think theirs goes back <laughs> Damn porcupines. Anyway, hey, the quill itself felt like it was made, it has some keratin. It was made out of keratin, yes, is that right? it is. Very cool, man. So, guys, their quills are made out of the same protein that our fingernails, hair, and tortoise, the outer layer of tortoise shells are made of, which we have a tortoise right there looking for a treat as well. But he's not going to eat peanuts. No, no so... No, good. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Keep the diet proper. But he definitely is usually our one of our stars of the African Crested Porcupine Encounters because yeah. they he loves attention too. So usually we'll tell guests that they're allowed to pet him because they definitely yeah. can feel it. Um, their spine is connected to their shell. So. Exactly. Yeah, so. they're cool. Animals. May I try? Do can I try and feed one of these guys? Yeah, of course. I'll keep their front end. So with just me. make sure you always feed with a fly hand because they have those incisors of teeth that are very sharp. So if you kind of hold it this way, they can accidentally. So they're uh, sharp on that end and that end. <laughs> so you got to be careful. I'm gonna listen to Kayla. Flat hand, everybody. So Let's sometimes see. you can guide them up <laughs> onto your knee. Really? Yeah. Hey. Sometimes. <laughs> Stella! Stella! Do you remember that movie? I don't know, Kayla. You're a little young. Here you go. Here, so if you guide them up. St Stella, Stella, Stella. Okay. I don't know why I'm so nervous. That mammals freak me out sometimes, man. <laughs> Look at that. Look at the little Kraken. Look at this. Come here. They're cute. They put their little feet there and then they use those big teeth, giant, murderous teeth. To no, I'm just kidding. You know, I'm joking. Hey, sweetheart. They are so cute in a strange way. What? Toucan? Hornbill. Hornbill. All right. Um, what family of mammal do they belong to? What are they mostly related to? They look, they almost have like a capybara kind of looking like face, but do you know what they would be? Um, so they're closely related to any uh, rodents, so they're part of the rodent family. They are. So, Por porcupines. Yep. They are a type of rodent. See that? So when I said capybara, I'm not, I'm not lying. <laughs> Uh, or I wasn't too far off. Hey, babe, may I have another one? Yeah. I feel she's up on my knee, so let's reward her. Thank you so much. I don't like that. I don't like that. Uh, are we going to see one more animal, maybe? Definitely can. Let's do it, because, you know, I like them, but I don't... They're the one things that I would like to see walking away from me, not backing up towards me. <laughs> you know that old joke? I hate it when you leave, but I love to watch you go. I say that to Kate all the time. <laughs> These guys kind of the opposite. See ya. <laughs> Aha, yeah, well, I think, oh, we have to disinfect? Yes, please. <laughs> You're not OCD, are you? Am I OCD? No. It's good after shave. <laughs> I don't shave much, but it's good the lemurs like it. <laughs> Time for some lemurs. Now, you guys know my buddy Jason Abels uh, keeps these lemurs. So this is kind of neat. So I love any kind of primate. You know what I mean? Like it's just, they're such a high energy animal, huh, Kayla? Yes, they are. Oh, look at this. And then with that high energy and the fact that they're a primate or a pre simian, pro simian rather, um, you're looking at basically uh, a very, 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 very distant, distant, distant relation to me. Uh, I don't know about any of you else, but I'm definitely related to a ringtail because I'm spindly, I'm wiry, and I'm a little spastic, but graceful at times. I think I'm full of it too, to be honest. These guys, are, what, I, what I love about them and what's so exciting for Hank, may I crouch down? Is yeah. it okay to go yeah. eye level this with this guy? Yeah. Um, so you can touch him on the back. I can? Hello. Yes, you oh, can. Oh, they feel so cool. It's like a little chia. That's awesome. Do you want to feed him? I sure do. Thank you. Yeah, not a problem. Uh, raisins were raisins or these cran craisins. craisins. They like craisins. Ocean spray only. <laughs> uh, these guys are awesome, man. That's so cute. Thank you. But the the thing I was uh, gonna say just about 
you know, I love primates because the activity levels. I love really watching these guys move through their habitats. Um, it's an entertaining to me. I once sat for two and a half hours at the San Francisco Zoo in 1999 and watched the uh, gibbons move through uh, the treetops through their enclosure. And these guys aren't like gibbons, but they do have a really uh, impressive way of moving. Uh, they're from Madagascar, correct? They are. Yeah, all lemurs are from Madagascar, Correct. aren't they? Yeah. There's usually about a hundred different types of species of lemurs. So what? In, on that one island, yes. there's a hundred different species yes. of lemur. Okay, start naming them. I don't know them all. Oh, name. Boy, <laughs> but we do you. have two right here in our park that you can come visit and see. So we have our ringtail lemurs, which you guys, uh, people can get an up close personal experience with. And then we're next door from them, as well as across the way, we kind of have um, two exhibits of rough rough lemurs. This this is really great. I mean, this is just an incredible experience. And guys, you know what? I always say that when you're able to get close with animals, it brings you um, a different perspective of them. And it really, it connects humans and animals, which has been sadly so far removed. Uh, and it's great that this facility, Wild Florida, uh, does this kind of presentation. The animals are in such great care. They have knowledgeable staff. And you can see they're just really well done, uh, well acclimated to this. So if you have a chance, if you're vacationing in Florida, I highly recommend coming out here to Wild Florida. Check them out online, wildflorida.com? Yes. Yes, there you go. Check out, Wild. I'll tell you what, we'll put a link in the description so you guys can check it out so you can bug your family to come visit. Airboat rides, gators, lemurs, porcupines, porcup I'm saying it like some kind of old school, like ca Cajun man, man, the porcupines. Them porcupines are cute, but don't get hit by the quill. Anyway, folks, I'm done. Thank you, Kayla. My buddy, Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. He's right there. He's making sure I don't do anything too ridiculous. Uh, you guys, like and subscribe. Come visit these folks. It's a really great facility. We'll see you again soon. He's looking. He's looking. I don't have anything I'm showing. Come here, look at it. He's drooling. This. Like, what's that happening?